So, since around this time last year, I've been pushing an idea around anarcho-coalitionism. It's a militant, organized form of panarchy, and operates by forming a general coalition of any anarchist willing to participate and forming sub-coalitions to accomplish certain shared goals. So naturally, this brings out the midwits from the woodwork, seeping up from the floorboards as an amorphous paste to tell me you can't work with X group, they're not real anarchists. This is the most advanced case of that cancer, in the form of a video by a guy who perpetually sounds like he's choking on a... something. In it, he conflates all communists with Marxists, ignores ANCOM principles, ignores the history of Rothbard, and claims that anyone who supports property rights is, quote, Rothbardian, and in general, shits all over the board, knocks over all the pieces, and declares victory. So, I'm going to dismantle and demolish everything he says and prove this pedantic pawn scum for what it is. To give you some flavor, here is the current description. After a series of unpleasant conversations with the man of whom pushes terrible ideas and continues to bathe himself in some of the worst aspects of the old and outdated, quote, skeptic community, end quote, Hoplu decides enough is enough about three months ago when this actually happened, but before the everything, and decides to take animated revenge against Jeremiah Harding and to thrash his absolutely ridiculous idea of anarcho-coalitionism, an idea as dumb if not not more dumb than its name. Of course, Hot Blue does not deny the fact that not all the individuals of whom suffer being plagued with membership in this movement are anything but bad people, as well as the fact that tribalism between ideologies is a truly stupid idea, and that friendship between people even with different ideologies is something that the Earth desperately needs. However, for reasons explained in this video, Hoplu does not believe that anarcho-coalitionism is the best way to achieve such. Either way, please enjoy this video as Hoplu perambulates into the plaguish idea that is anarcho-coalitionism. That was the description. And it should give you an idea of the kind of person here. Already before you even hit play, he's excessively using filler words and writing in the key of veteran fanfic author. I mean, come on. The man of whom pushes terrible ideas? The individuals of whom suffer being plagued with membership in this movement? As well as the fact that? It's like he copied a homework assignment with a minimum word threshold. But I digress. So without further ado, let's hit the video. To the Lord that blessed me with my sinners, am I a bit late for this one? A while back, actually about a month or two ago, SPREAD and I had accidentally made enemies for life with a man named Jeremiah Harding, a skeptic gamergate goren with an eternal case of hair after SPREAD had taken a very large issue with his new idea, anarcho-coalitionism. Anarcho-coalitionism is, as is pretty self-explanatory, the idea that the different sects of anarchy, anarcho-capitalism, communism, mutualism, Judaism, etc, etc, should set aside their differences and instead create an anarchist alliance intent on ending the state through the means of blinding them to death with this edgy-ass logo, and in its place establishing a pan-anarchist, panarchist, utopia. Sprin is someone I'd consider myself having animus toward. You? Mild frustration, but mostly nothing. I mostly make people want to be enemies with me. Like the kind who makes a video calling my idea of positive change a plague. Seems like you'd rather be my enemy than the other way around, to be honest. I'm an enemy magnet, though. It's understandable. Anyway. You misunderstand the point of Ankol. It isn't just to combine into one group. It's to have a primary coalition understood and sub-coalitions for various goals. I do suppose I should make a video explaining this in more detail, but your surface-level dismissals are facile at best. We're not always going to agree with each other. That's absurd. We can, however, work together where it works, and Ancol seeks to build bridges wherever possible. 
It also seeks to shrug the image that many anarchists have been trying for, where we're all supposed to be a bunch of peaceniks in the face of the totalitarian state. I put it this way. Anarcho-coalitionism is militant, organized panarchy. Pacifists are obviously welcome, but so are the enraged, and that's why I chose the logo I did. It's not grandiose, and it's not colored with a color any of the primary schools of anarchy claim. It's a small amount of light, contrasted with a black background comprising most of the image. It's a mostly dark image, with the contrast being the light, metaphorically and rhetorically valuable to the message. And it has a gun. Huey Newton put it well. Sometimes, if you want to get rid of the gun, you have to pick up the gun. The gun is a symbol of popular liberation, and I won't let that be forgotten. In which the form of anarchy is voluntarily chosen by the different communities and what have you in a sort of mosaic society. So what have I against this exactly? I mean, I'm a man cap. I want the state to die, and I don't mind people practicing a voluntary communism. So what's the problem? To answer that question, I must respond with a confusing mess of messy answers of which will undoubtedly confuse you to the point of confusion and misery. Either way, the point of which I am trying to confuse you with is the fact that no communist will ever be a panarchist. Huh, Blue, what the hell do you mean by that? There are plenty of people who describe themselves as communists but are willing to peacefully coexist with anarcho-capitalists many of whom you consider your friends. Oh, hell, why are you still alive? Answer my question. Ugh, fine. At two minutes in, you completely detonate the rest of your argument while also shooting the voice of reason in your video. I know this is meant to be played for laughs, but really my entire response video could have just been this clip with the theme for Curb Your Enthusiasm in the back. The world's politics run on memes anyway, so I could have, but fortunately you're dealing with a pontificating asshole with a brevity problem. So after you disagree with the character in your video that's correct, I'll continue. What is an undeniable truth of the matter that is this matter is that panarchy, the end goal of anarcho-collisionism, requires voluntarism at its basis. The reason why is for the obvious fact that for these different anarchist communities to peacefully coexist, there must be an ethic of property of which prohibits the aggression between anarchist tribes of whom follow different sects of anarchy. Otherwise, what is it that stops the anarcho-primitivist from undoing the anarcho communist what stops the anarcho-capitalist from vandalizing the queer anarchist and what stops the mutualist from being invaded by anarcho-pacifists what i would answer to this would be the rothbardian answer and that is to privatize the community so that aggression between them is strictly prohibited as that would be a violation of the non-aggression principle however there is an apparent problem with the concept of privatization in the context of anarcho-collisionism and panarchy and that is what should be a no-brainer that not every single sect of anarchy supports the position of privatization, many of which are even flat out against its very existence. Anarcho-communism, for example. It is true that it can be debated as to what, quote-unquote, true communism is. However, the fact that it is against the concept of privatization should be fairly obvious. In fact, Marx's own summary of communism is the abolition of private property. The linchpin of your counter is that panarchism requires voluntarism. No shit. But then you go on to conflate all communists with Marxism, fold your arms, and declare victory, when in fact, non-Marxist communism is something one can Google, and even has its own entire section in the wiki entitled List of Communist Ideologies. I've included the link. Notably, after it gets done listing 13 schools of Marxist communism which require outright statism or a statist transition period, you get to this section. And what's the first subheading? Anarchist communism. How amazing that anarchist communism is not a part of the communism, what's manifesto is always used to justify that which isn't anarchy. Under this subheading, you find out about Peter Kropotkin, syndicalist communes, and the next subheading of Christian communism, all involving statelessness and pushing for a stateless society. 
almost like the Marxists aren't who I'm trying to convince. Almost like your video is a straw man against the one reason you cherry pick to dislike Ann Coles, that it wouldn't let you just dismiss anyone but your friends in anarchist YouTube, trademark, or on Twitter. Almost like the existence of authentic anarchist communism pokes holes in a lot of the quote memes you lot share around. Almost. But this would mean that simply donning the black and yellow doesn't win you the debate already, and as we're about to see, you aren't on board with that change quite yet. So how does this pose a problem? To answer that question, imagine this situation of which I am about to describe to you. Once upon a time in the glorious panarchist's glorious utopia, an anarcho-communist tribe desires a shiny piece of property held by the neighboring anarcho-capitalist tribe. They really, really want it. And fortunately for the anarcho-communist tribe, they do not believe in the concept of private property. In fact, their whole philosophy is about the abolition of such. Do they, the anarcho-communist tribe, have the right to grab their guns and waltz into the uncapped tribe and seize the property for themselves? If your answer was yay, then you have properly proven to me why there is no means for panarchy to exist, as this violates the right of the anarcho-capitalist tribe to the self-determination of which would be granted to them by panarchy, as it could be violated by a neighbor with a different view of property and anarchy. This point of property is a straw man that many NCAPs blithely take at face value. However, the reason Ancom's joke about taking your toothbrush is precisely because they know it gets under the skin of whoever accepts this without any scrutiny. Anarchist communism is not opposed to personal property, but private. In anarchist communes, you're either entitled to whatever was agreed to upon entry and whatever you can make with your labor, or a cut of what the community produces, providing you work as a part of that production. Not all communists want to abolish property as a whole, and in fact, a small minority comprise those who do. Even smaller still is that percentage under ANCOM ideas who want that. They, instead, believe surplus labor, or profit, to be a source of exploitation. And when you conflate all types of property with one another, well, Alexander Berkman put it this way, Yet you are asked to believe that you, the workers, have the same interests as your exploiters and robbers. Can anyone but a downright fool be taken in by such a plain fraud? Read Berkman's What is Communist Anarchism. While you may shake your head a lot in disagreement, what you can't do is find advocacy of statism. Quite the opposite. Adherence to ANCOM ideas often echo Berkman, claiming provisional governments are not improvements on capitalism, but a downhill drive. More examples of this mindset exist, but I want this vid to be under 20 minutes, or it'll take all day to upload with fucking Hughesnet. But your privatization propaganda has my inner Berkman coming up anyway, as many believe little could be done to mitigate monopolist disputes if certain things weren't considered non-private. And Rothbard cucked to the rightest state before he died anyway. See my piece on his, quote, unleash the cops comment, and how his politics at the time of issuing that comment were surrounded by a phalanx of impatience-driven right-wing populism. His view may have at one point been anarchist-adjacent, but his is a cautionary tale of what happens when you hate the left more than you hate the state. Still, I can't help but notice that, again, you conflate all communism with Marxism and refuse to acknowledge the distinction ANCOMs make between private and personal property. This is a fatal error in successful counter-argument, and you'd realize that if you actually studied ANCOM ideology. You've made it clear you haven't. In order to run a successful coalition, it takes people who've looked into the various schools of anarchy enough to know what they advocate, and not strawman like this. It's not lost on me how someone who hasn't looked into the various schools of anarchy would think Ann Cole is impossible. If the breadth of your philosophy is internet memes and you try for the big boy conversations, you're gonna have a bad time. 
At four minutes, eight seconds in, you ask a question easily answerable by the end composition. Do they have the right to seize the property produced by a neighboring tribe? No. They are not the worker who produced that, nor are they the community they might think it belongs to. Your example is a burger, for fuck's sake, and that would never be something an ANCOM would consider seizing anyway. It, obviously, being the food a worker produced and needs to live. What a bougie thing it would be to steal it from his mouth. Might as well wear a top hat and call yourself Rockefeller. And let me ask, Hoplu, did anyone answer yes? Didn't think so. But even if someone had, a bad actor doesn't invalidate a whole system you clawed. If that's the case, all systems are impossible as is demonstrated by some of the shitheads I've dealt with in your camp. Like Sprin, who by this point has already read himself into a coma over me quoting Huey Newton earlier in this vid and proceeding to give Ancoms a fair shake. You know, like he did when I quoted the guy before. Because Sprin is a great example of your brain on internet. Like when he supported a video of a guy apparently being attacked by a royal guard because he was taunting him. Or when he asserted, with no evidence, proper case, spelling, or punctuation, that forced capitalism is a contradiction in terms. Or when he said all forms of communism must be beaten back. A tweet you liked, without knowing about or acknowledging all forms of communism to ensure a state does not form. But beating back communism is not an insurance that a state won't form. It's not even insurance that the state you hate won't form. People will wonder why you're beating people instead of just letting their ideas fail. If you're so convinced they will. But I digress. Wouldn't have brought up Sprin, but you wanted him in the video and you wanted a response vid. So here we are. You then go on to say that anyone who respects property rights is Rothbardian. How utterly laughable, how completely wrong, how absurd to assign the concept of property existing for millennia to a man who died less than 50 years ago, and then claim that the only way to support property is to be Rothbardian. And I could even go into discrepancies with Rothbardian property respect, but I've already demolished this point. Supporting property is not equal to being Rothbardian. Period. And again, not all communists are Marxist, and ANCOMs don't want to steal a worker's food, so your binary sucks ass. You say, I shouldn't have to explain this shit, but I've yet to see adequate explanations. Lots of great examples of how to overuse filler words, though. Another cornerstone down. Got a real tippy tower to stand on now, and only three minutes left. Let's hit it. If your answer was nay, however, then I would agree with you. In fact, I'm even glad that you chose this option, and that, dear viewer, is the problem. For you see, anyone who would say that the ANCOM tribe does not have the right to waltz in and take the property of the ANCAPs believes as such because of the fact that this is, quite simply, the property of the ANCAPs. And a respect for property can only mean one thing and one thing only. They're a rough guardian, just like me! And in order to be a communist, you absolutely cannot be a Rothbardian, as the communist doctrine not only allows, but demands the seizure of said property. You cannot be a communist and respect private property. As such, in the end, only one form of anarchy can possibly emerge from anarchy, and that is, of course, anarcho-capitalism. Even if there is not a single traditionally market capitalist economy being practiced on anarchist earth, it would still be a Rothbardian anarchy for the fact that private property is respected. So all those ANCOMs who believe in actual panarchy, welcome to my team. Don't let the yellow and the taxation is theft memes blind you to death. So this begs the question then, what is the value of anarcho-collisionism? At best, anarcho-collisionism is a worthless fad. A meaningless movement with a puke-bleedingly bad logo and an eternal case of hair. At worst, however, 
It is the golden opportunity for the people of whom are absolutely not panarchists, but are instead the cancers of which make up the overwhelming majority of those under the red on black flag, of whom would instead betray the Rothbardians and those who respect private property to instead impose a proletariat dictatorship as communist revolutions, actual communist revolutions, tend to do. But you know what? Let's just for a minute ignore the backwards philosophy of this entire idea. Let's just pretend that it does not exist. Is there still value in anarcho collisionism To that I would respond, no! Sometimes it feels like I'm the only one with enough fucking memory to remember the jolly old time when Ann Camps thought it was a good idea to align themselves with the alt-right to resist the left. Tell me, what fruit has that bore? People who worship military dictators? Accusations of a libertarian to alt-right pipeline? How about Stephen Molyneux becoming a sellout? Or the alt-right hitting libertarian ideas even more than before? Is this what you would call something that was a good idea from the start and had good results? Nay! You go on to falsely claim, because of your binary, which sucks, that because ANCOMs are wrong, all other anarchists but ANCAPs are also wrong. You're just lazy. Plain and simple. A lazy person, bent on impatiently cutting to conclusions, would obviously ignore mutualists, syndicalists, pacifists, transhumanists, agorists, and all other flags on your poorly drawn globe. And you're lazy. You even showed the anarchy without adjectives symbol, which still isn't a complete list, and ignored all but two. My list, combined with queer anarchy and green anarchy, is still not complete, but by all means ignore information you put in your own video. Lazy fuck. Your binary sucks. And since your binary sucks, you begin pontificating on how poorly it went when ANCAPs tried to align with fascists as though that's the same thing or in any way meaningfully comparable, while ignoring the history of the man you spent most of the video filleting, who spent his last years doing just that. Further, Rothbard wrote as early as 1950 that anarchy was too leftist a term and that libertarians ought not call themselves anarchist. I could go on, but I think I've made my point. So no, anarchists don't necessarily support your or Rothbard's positions, nor does any propertarian need to also be Rothbardian. Now let's watch your tower fall. Political coalitions are only good in the short run, as in getting a specific policy pushed. But for the long haul, what must be done is spreading ideas. Not pampered, watered-downed ideas to pander to the enemies of liberty, but the truth! Ron Paul did this. He went up against the establishment and exposed the warfare state for 9-11 and the Federal Reserve for the housing bubble. He took the heat for exposing the truth, but in the end, he created more libertarians than any political coalition with either the left or the right will ever, ever achieve. So this is why, Harding, that the ones known as SPRUN and I believe that anarcho-coalitionism is a plague. I never once recommended pampering or watering down, and in fact, if anyone diluted and diluted anything here, it's you. You and the fake-ass crowd who baselessly pushed against my idea and did so without the slightest modicum of research or rigor, and without asking me questions that could have avoided you making dumb fuck, self-embarrassing videos like this to begin with. You're not here for the truth. You're here to foist yourself on the legitimacy of others without any of the work and stand atop it at once like the mountain you had your poorly drawn characters climbing. And I gotta say, this whole thing was pretty poorly drawn and seems like the bastard child of Odd Ones Out and Kurtzgesagt pushed through a cheese grater and left too long on the high setting in the microwave. And that's not even getting into the voice. But... Art and intellectual criticism aside, I hope I've given you something to consider, because even though you thought you'd get revenge and failed miserably, amounting to little more than a pedantic white knight for a guy who made and likely makes a habit of going out of his depth, your response is the most complete anyone has given. And for that, I respect you. A little. Like a nickel of a dollar's worth. And either way, thanks for calling it a plague. If my ideas 
can become plagues in a matter of months, I must be great at viral ideas. A living meme. That's why I don't care if you, PewDiePie, or anyone else wants to pretend that somehow my appearance has bearing on my points. Go ahead. Like Queensryche said, you're just spreading the disease. You go on to say that Ron Paul has done more for liberty, and I agree. He's also 83. Let me become 30, and maybe we'll start comparing the two of us. Right now, you're using a great man as a cudgel for your scribbly coloring book of a video. I'd ask if you had any shame, but we all know you don't. So, where was I? Oh yeah, I have a plague to spread.